Good morning. Uh, good morning. Sorry, I'm trying to get all the settings fixed here. I think you need to be a co-host. Yeah, I need a, I would like that. There you go. All right, you should be able to. Yeah. And oh, yeah. hey, you got the beauty filter on today. I know it's just better with uh, the the way this thing works. I have like this. Um, I what's the, the the particular type of light is just, it's right over my head, man. Yeah, and, mine's not that great either, and I got a window over on this side, so it's always like. I'm shiny on one side and not on the other. I need to get yeah, like that's a, what I mean. In the that, center. That's what I get back here is uh, the, the light, but it's all here. So we're going to have SoCal Title on today. They've got a new title tool. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily a farming tool, it's more for generating net sheets and different things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's a farming tool. I don't know. We're going to see. Um, they're going to pop on about 9.15. They had a, a prior meeting. So that should give you plenty of time to kind of get through what you want to get through today. All right. Let and I get the week off of presenting. Nice. <laughs> Let's move this back. All right. I'm just going to watch out for him to see when he pops on. Is that for now? All right, the chat is open. If you guys have any questions on stuff, go ahead and pop it in the chat. Um, raise your hand, whatever, whatever works, and we'll we'll get to those. Um, today we have a uh, SoCal title. They're going to be coming on um, to show. I believe it's a new app that they have for their phone. Um, I. I'm not, I, I don't think it's a farming tool. Um, I think it's more for um, buyer presentations, listing presentations, generating net sheets, things like that. Um, I know that question comes up quite a bit. Where do I get a net sheet? You know, how do I put in the fees? Stuff like that. So I, I think that this is going to be um, that solution there. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder for everybody. <clears throat> excuse me. Our trending now webinar is this Wednesday. Um, so this is our new format for, um, the Wednesday webinars, um, we're planning to have guest speakers, each one of these, uh, we're doing these once a month. Um, last month we had our rep from UWM come on and talk to us about the two, one buy down program, what it was, he answered questions, things like that. So this is a little bit more of an interactive type of, uh, webinar. So uh, this month we have a uh, coach. She's actually my business coach um, coming on. She's going to go over some goal setting with us, give us some tools, a little bit of mindset stuff, um, kind of like a very, very, very condensed version of one of her workshops, basically. Um, but it's going to be focusing on goal setting, which is, you know, uh, something that we're all kind of doing right now. We're all thinking about how we how we're going to, you know, have a better 2023. What are we going to do different? What are, what are my goals going to be? So um, she's going to help us with some of that. And um, she's just a really positive energy. So I, I recommend, you know, getting on there, seeing what she has to uh, say about the goal setting and, and the tools she's going to bring. And then, um, yeah, so that'll be this Wednesday. But we'll go ahead and start off with Andrew. Uh, he's going to give awesome. us a mortgage update and uh, talk to 
talk about some other all right stuff. cool hey, and yeah. just to start out so i've i've been fortunate enough to meet deborah and uh if you have the time mix uh for her presentation it's worth it it's definitely um it's not your typical real estate stuff which is really nice so keep that in mind it's it's a little bit bigger broader business type of uh information and, and ideas and i think it really can open your mind to what you can do as well as how you can build your real estate business so it'll be pretty pretty uh much worth your time in my opinion hold on let me grab my my screen here and we will get going all right all right so uh, let's go here Boom. perfect okay so uh new little format uh doing doing something a little bit different um i didn't use my uh typical um uh, scenario this morning i went off a new site uh that i'm working off of uh for which will play into what i'm going to share in a little bit but um this shows for california um the the most offered rate right now as of probably over the weekend last friday thursday <laughs> A 7.625. Uh, we're seeing some in eight down here. You can see as low as 6.625. Um, okay. So um, I wanted to show a comparison here because I guarantee you everyone on this call right now has had a conversation about with somebody saying, I should probably wait. Rates are so high. Absolutely, rates are high. They've been higher, they've been lower. Um, we're, we're closer to the low side than the highest, at least in my life. Um, but you know, there's nothing exciting about today's rates. So I did a comparison here. Um, we, we obviously we're not at 8%, but this was the widest range I could do. So let's say, uh, for instance, um, if rates were, you know, if you had to take an 8% rate and you were, and your client was saying, oh man, I would, I would really buy if you know rates were lower in the sixes at least you know fives or sixes i'd probably be ready to buy well here's a great comparison almost two points difference in a five-year period and this is based off of our seven hundred thousand dollar purchase which is what i used in the example previously and that example showing this seven point um one two six five rate didn't change between a five or a twenty percent down payment so that wasn't that wasn't the big issue there. It's just the rates in general. But for a $700,000 house, it would cost $38,000 more uh, in the first five years at 8% versus a 625 rate. It's almost 40 grand, that's a lot of money. But, and this is a very conservative 5% increase in value year over year, that same $700,000 house would potentially be worth somewhere around $851,000. That's a $112,000 profit overpaying the $38,000. You're getting your 38 grand back out of this 851 and you're still profiting another $110,000. So this right here is a great conversation piece to have when you're talking to somebody like this. And the one thing that's not going to happen, let's say this house in this five years, this house might drop to 650, you know, 640, but it's, uh, you know, in value, but it's going to go back up to seven and it's going to go much higher. What it's not going to do, what's not going to happen is you know, you're not going to see this thing drop to six, then to 550, then to 400. And rates also dropping with it. It's just not going to happen. I know that it's easier for me to say that to you than for you or me or any of us to say this to a client that might want to buy or not. But that's the fact is these prices are going to fluctuate a little bit, but they're going to fluctuate like this. You know, just little humps, little drops as they climb year over year and five percent in california is very 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 conservative my part i mean we know in the last two years we saw some places some neighborhoods oh well over 20 25 percent so but here's the, the the good news is yeah it's going to cost you more but you're also going to profit significantly 
if you do take ownership of a property. So it, like I always say, if you can afford the payment for the home that you want to buy, it's worth it to do it right now because you start working from 700,000 towards the home value being 851 just by living there and paying your mortgage. All right. What I wanted to talk to you about today was credit reports, credit errors, and disputing a potential credit problem. So um, I am not a fan of credit repair um, at all. It's expensive, it's incredibly slow, and it's really, it's it's really a business that just sort of they sort of don't really do a whole lot. They just kind of guide you and, and charge you, and it doesn't necessarily uh, save you money or time. Um, and, and so, you know, what I wanted to do for you guys is just put together, this is actually right off of, uh, the CFPB's website. Um, but I wanted to just gather this stuff and kind of talk about it a little bit. So when you're in this situation, oh, I want to, I really do want to buy, but I have some bad credit stuff, or I have this weird credit thing, or I don't know what to do about my credit. Well, if that comes up, at least you can have, you know, a little bit of a uh, informed and educational, you know, response to them to help them, which puts you in a position of being the go-to person for finance, for real estate, for credit, which keeps the door open to you having more conversations with them about them potentially buying. So how do we dispute an error on a credit report? Um, oftentimes we meet people that have credit issues, I just want to share some of the ideas uh, and ways for you guys to follow up. So um, one of the first things that you're going to do when you want to create a dispute is you're just going to you're going to put together an email or a print letter with your basic contact information. There's, there's nothing magical about this. Um, the big thing that you want to include whenever you are disputing a credit issue is you want to supply them with the file number and potentially the company um, where you got the credit information. So this is uh, Advantage Credit. This is who we use when we pull credit for clients. Um, this file number highlighted in yellow, that is that is a specific um, document that um, they can go in. And, and, and when I say they, we're, I'm talking about uh, TransUnion, Equifax. Uh, I can't think of the other one offhand. But the three main bureaus are going to be able to go in to Advantage Credit and request this information. They, they, they share back and forth information like that. So they'll be able to do that, especially because by you requesting the, the dispute, you're asking them to do work within your credit. So they're going to they're going to be able to get this information and see what's on your credit report. So um, you want to explain what the dispute information is. Here's an example. I just wanted to grab this. Um, this is what a credit report kind of looks like. You can see um, you've got, you know, what this particular person doesn't have a whole lot of credit. So they're actually self-reporting their utilities. For me, I've probably paid, I only pay, of all the bills we pay, my wife pays them all. And if if she paid my one, uh, the one bill that I'm responsible for, which is our AT&T uh, bill, I, I'd probably be thousand, two thousand dollars ahead in late fees that I'm always billed because I pay like a week late just because I don't know why. But, so for me, um, uh, self-reported would be bad, but they're trying to build credit. So this is a way that you can do that. It shows what their average, you know, um, money is, uh, how much they have, how much their bill is, how much their bill is owed here. Um, if we scroll down here, you get the second one is a self-reported as well. Looks like another, um, this is another cell phone right there, but then we get to capital one bank. Um, so at some point in this highlighted in yellow, they've had up to $800 in credit available. Their current balance happens to be 12 bucks, which they're just asking to go ahead and make the minimum payment and pay that off. Um, you can see over here to the right, it says uh, as agreed, meaning that it's always been paid on time. 
So this is what we would include. This is, we would want them, if we were going to dispute this $12, which for, you know, us today, we're going to dispute that. We want to include the bank. We want to include the account number. We want to include anything extra here specifically. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, and, you know, the date last reported, you know, anything that seems relevant, um, the amount, anything like that. So, and here's the same thing. You've got the same 12 bucks. Um, explain why you're disputing this. And uh, this worked out good for me, I think. So in this explanation of why I think that I need to dispute this is because uh, you can see here, I have two of nearly the same um, accounts open. Um, now you can see, excuse me, you can see that they're, by looking at the account numbers, these are actually different. But in this scenario, um, I might say, hey, I'm disputing this 12, that $12 fee um, because I paid it and um, it should be paid off. I'm positive I paid it here. And you could supply a, let's say, a check showing that you paid 12 bucks. Unfortunately, you made the mistake and you actually paid the Capital One Bank um, with the account ending in 1272. You didn't know that. They're saying that you still owe 12 bucks. You're saying, I don't. Here's a reason why you might dispute something. Additionally, this is also why you would want to share the information with them. All right. So um, you want to request that the information be removed or corrected. So we want, ideally, what we want is to see on, on the next report or a you know supplemental report that this says you know paid collected you know the the col collected is collections means it was means this particular one was paid in collections uh, but paid is the key here so we would see this on the credit report um, and it would show see up here you can see this one's in collections right now for this particular person um, this one is showing was was 30 days late but what we're looking for in a scenario of of getting an update is that this was now marked as paid and there you see the zero balance here so this can also take there's a couple of things that are tricky this isn't like when you hang up they're done they take all your information they put it into the system and it could it could take um up to you know maybe 60 days depending on when you call because they need to, if you don't ask for a special um, report generated, they're going to wait till they're just going to input the data. And then once the, the company that was paid off updates their files, then it goes to the um, three credit bureaus. So of those two things happening, that could take 60 days to post to see this on a credit report where it's in, in full. Now you can ask for um, an updated report, um, but they're gonna charge you for that. So it depends on how important it is to you. If you're just watching and, and making sure that your credit is fixed, or if in the situation of we're in the middle of escrow and I need this gone and figured out because it might help your credit score, or it's a derogatory that the underwriter is upset about, and we're saying that it's not accurate, we want to prove that it is. We're going to go ahead and pay whatever that fee is and, and get that for you so you can close on your house and, and move on. But that's what we really want. So making this request, getting it removed, it's not always immediate. Uh, you want to enclose a copy of the credit report if you can. So we're, we're kind of building this thing where basically we're sending an email or a letter um, to either the company that is reporting bad credit, say it's this bank, um, which I would send it to them too. Um, and then you would also want to potentially go to all of the, the, the three main bureaus and you can um, send it directly to them. Now, one thing when you are sending a dispute, and here's why, here's why um, credit reporting or credit repair companies um, are in business because a document like this is what needs to be used 
when you're uh, when you have a dispute request. And it's it's pretty easy for us. We fill out a lot of you know documents like this, but to the average person, you know, four or five pages of this is intimidating. You know, so these credit repair companies are are used to seeing this, and all they're doing is you know helping you get this done, doing this for you, collecting the information in a conversation, an email, and then filling this out, submitting it for you, and following along to make sure that um, it's being taken care of, as well as helping you potentially with a plan of how to pay your uh, credit bills or things like that when um, to help you, you know, repair your credit. So, you know, Again, you're going to close a copy of the credit report showing that you have you've seen this that it's showing up there, um, and that way they know what you're disputing. Um, you always want to send copies and not the originals. Um, all right. So what happens after you've made a dispute? You know, uh, the next thing is so a credit reporting companies um, once you've made this dispute, they must investigate your dispute. They you you call them. It's not like you know they're going to hang up and, and move on. They have to um, investigate this, unless um, well, and they have to report back to you unless they determine the claim is frivolous. Now I don't know what terms um, would allow them to say that your claim is frivolous. Um, I mean that could be any number of things. Let's assume it's not. Yeah, and you've shown the documentation like we've kind of gone over that you have a paid, you know, canceled check that you have. You see it on your bank statement. You can show, you know, the account number, anything like that. All those things you've got and, and supplied the data that shows that you're right. So they're not going to worry about it being frivolous, but they must report back to you um, if they're not going to do it. And they must investigate the dispute. Now. Um, if the consumer reporting company or service determines it is frivolous, um, they can choose not to investigate and they have to let you know within five days. So you're not just lost. Like it's not like they decided, no, you're going to find out and then you can move forward with, um, you know, something else. And maybe at that point is you hire a credit repair company. I, I'm not positive. I'm assuming that if they're saying that it's frivolous, if that's the case, the person making the dispute might also realize that they weren't able to pull one over and get this thing cleared up. Okay, if the if the furnisher corrects the information, so once you've proven to them that there was an error, you need this fixed. The and they've they've confirmed that the information is correct. It it must be. Um, they must notify all the credit reporting companies that they share that negative information with. So anybody that they've sent inaccurate information to, they need to follow up with that. I'm sure that that's probably a rather simple electronic system. Um, mostly what we want to see for you is what's going to show up on the credit report. So those three main bureaus, that's what you're going to chase or you're gonna suggest them following along because who knows, you know, there could always be an outlier somewhere um, that didn't get updated, but it is their job. And if you find some, if, if your client does find out that, you know, something's not reported right after the fact, well, the good news is um, the statement, they're gonna create a statement um, for you that provides this, um, on your credit report. So every time that um, you have a credit a credit report and you've had this done, there is going to be a statement on there that shows that they made a request. So if the information is accurate and does not update um, or remove the information, boom, you can request the credit reporting company include a statement explaining this. So now they've 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 confirmed that you are correct. They've said that they um, were going to update everyone as they're meant to, but for some reason, you're not seeing it. Now you're going to take, again, you're going to take the documentation and said, hey, they are, they agreed this was wrong. Here's the data that proved why it was wrong. And you're going to get that to them and you're going to get it to, to the three main bureaus, 
which now is going to force um, a statement like this to be included in your uh, credit report. And this will, for all our purposes in the housing, if we saw this, um, we would send it directly to the underwriter. Hey, here's what's going on with credit. Here's why this is happening. Here's the statement showing that they did take care of this. And the servicer, for whatever reason, hasn't updated or refuses to update. But for us, we've documented everything and shared it with underwriting, which should allow us to be able to use the credit report and to deal with any conditions that the underwriter gave um, regarding the credit situation or past finances, a late payment, a missed payment, anything like that, which all these things are important because what a what an underwriter wants from your client is that they, you know, have have decent amount of credit, that they don't run their credit up to max limits on all their cards, that and that they pay on time, they don't have a bunch of lates. And proving to them that you've gone through the that your client's gone through the effort to chase down bad credit will um, help uh, you know the underwriter's decision of approving something based on a credit issue. So I hope this helped you guys. Um, if you want more information, I can show you the you can reach out in chat. And uh, if you want the exact uh, URL that I can send you to that has a little bit um, bigger breakdown of this, even a couple of little tools, some other email or URLs that will allow you to get the documents um, like the credit reporting one that I show here, um, I can get all that for you. So, but, you know, we know that, that uh, you know, Credit is a major issue for us. So uh, having conversations about credit repair and ways that you can do it without necessarily pushing off to a credit repair company that could take six months where you're still in the, the driver's seat being the helpful realtor or loan officer, whatever your job is with us, um, that they're still communicating with you and trying to figure this out. So I hope that helps. Um, Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Andrew. There are actually two questions in chat. If you can grab oh, those see. in chat, because I, we, um, I think we need to get started with James here. I think they're on a little bit of a schedule as well. Um, James, are you able to uh, unmute, hopefully? hopefully yeah. So. Hi there, Aunt, uh, Travis. Hey. All right. And you should be able to share your screen, too, if you need. Uh, yep. This is James with uh, SoCal Title. They have a new title tool, uh, and they are going to go over that with us. Happy to do that. Um, just let me know if if I'm good to present. And yeah, I'm probably just going to give Andrew here some time to respond to the questions. Um, He'll respond yeah. in the chat. It's OK. You oh, can go ahead and start. Gotcha. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay, great. Cool. We can see your screen. Awesome. Just going to do a slideshow here, real quick. And uh, yeah, pardon me, guys. There you go. All righty. Well, pleased to be here. Uh, Janelle, can you can you see my screen okay? I'm here, James. Yeah, so I, I, I'm i from SoCal Title. Uh, we also have your Janelle with me. Um, welcome to SoCal Title's new app, and that's what I'm about to showcase today, guys. Thank you for attending and for allowing me to facilitate. Um, this will be a brief call. Just want to share with you the agenda for today. Um, so SoCal Title, company has a new app and we'd like to share it with you and make sure we can help you out and make things more convenient for you guys. Um, in today's call, we'll share with you all the ways you'll be able to log into the platform or the app, which is pretty easy. Um, share with you how you'll be able to set up your profile, which is also easy as well. And show you and walk you through the ways you can 
set certain costs in your seller net sheets and buyer estimates within the tool and the app to be defaulted and be automated. Um, speaking of those tools, we'll also go through the seller net sheet and the buyer estimates and pretty much go through any of the tools we have here in so-called title, if you wish to. Um, and of course, I'll walk you through how to add it on your mobile phones and any other device and do some q and towards the end. So that's going to be our agenda for today. And I'll just share another part of my screen real quick. And give me one second here. So basically, I'll show you guys um, how easy it is to receive and confirm invitation from SoCal title once you are invited to join the app. What I just opened is the invitation sent um, by SoCal title. As you can see, it came from Janelli. Um, you know, sometimes our emails get pushed underneath. There's a chance that it would go through spam or junk. And at times it'll be difficult for you to find it, but no worries because you can use the following SoCal title company or just SoCal um, to look for the email as soon as Janelli or anyone from our team sends you an invitation. So you'll know who it came from, all right? Um, you can use that to you know, search from your mail and that should allow you to see you know, the email invitation from us. Um, there's a join now button here that you can click and as easy as that, you'll be able to set up your password and pretty much the rest is pre-filled. I'll just have to pick my role here. Select myself as a realtor. Okay, so the rest would be pre-filled as you can see. And the next thing I'll be seeing is my home screen for the platform. Um, so this is the home dashboard. A couple of things you can see here, you know who your title rep partner is and her contact information, it's gonna be Janelli. Um, we can see here are some quick links to our helpful tools, the seller net sheets and the title quote. We got that here as well when you click the calculate now button. So this basically brings you to your seller net sheet and all the other options are going to be right here on the top left and the top right where you can see your name. Um, before we go through the left ones, I was hoping I could show you guys how easy it is to set up your profile. So this is on a computer and basically just have to click your name here in the top right hand side. Click on profile settings and it'll bring you to this page right here. This is where you can set all your personal information, where you can even add your phone number. Basically, the links here for social media, it's a way for you to link your social media platforms and share the platform to whomever you want to share it with. Uh, you can also uh, go with an email. So if you want to share the platform to anyone you know, just add the email address in here, send it over and they'll know it came from you, and basically they'll have to go through the sign-up screen, which we've seen earlier, okay? Uh, your photo goes in here. Just choose from your gallery or uh, your documents, and as soon as you can see the file name in here, just hit update photo. Currently, we have one section for the photo, but please know that we have received feedback asking, you know, is there an, a way to add their company's logo? Um, and that feedback is reached management. As soon as it becomes available, we definitely would let you know. If not me, it's going to be Janelli. Okay. Um, the login details tab is where you can personalize your path. So as you can see, uh, very straightforward. That's the profile settings. Again, your name here at the top right hand side, just click on profile settings. Um, if it's on the mobile phone, guys, uh, on your screen, there's gonna be two bars or basically three bars in the top left. You click on it, scroll down a little bit and you'll be able to see profile settings. It's very easy. Now, one thing right here that I'd also like to share with you guys is the My Default Cost. So your seller tools and your buyer tools within the platform, which by the way, you can find here under the new estimate tab, you can automate it. Uh, you can automate certain fields in there. So home insurance, the property taxes, of course, your commission, guys, um, HOA dues and certain fields in there, um, additional mortgages, such as impounds, lender fees for each loan type can be set in here and can be automated. 
um, and any additional seller or buyer expenses can also be automated. What happens is when you set the home insurance rating here, let's say at 1.2%, right? Um, your property tax at 1.2, for example, um, your commissions at 2%, okay? Um, all of them will be present on your seller and buyer tools as you can see them here as indicated, right? So what happens is when your commissions are already automated on your calculators, basically when you pull it up for presentation, it's already gonna be there. Now, one good thing about the automated cost or the default cost is even though they're already in or preset on your calculators, it still gives you the flexibility to customize and adjust as you see fit. Okay, so based on the transaction, if it is not 2% and there's a negotiation needed, then you can go ahead and adjust it right there and then on your top of the Right, so maybe at 300. I'll just add that, go into my buyer expenses. Oops, my internet's playing up a little bit. My, my bad. There you go. Um, okay, let's do the same thing for my buyer tools. Okay, and I'm going to set that. And as easy as that, I've already set my default cost. Now, since this default cost comes into your rate calculators, which can be found here when you click on new estimate, there's 10 tools you can find here under the SoCal app. All right, we got three closing tool, uh, you know, quoting tools. Um, we got three seller tools and we got three buyer tools and the out to sell mint state. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the title quote real quick before we go into the seller net sheet. Um, or do you guys want to go through the seller net sheet and the buyer estimates uh, straight away? Uh, let's check out the seller net sheet because uh, that's mm -hmm. probably what I get the most questions about is where to awesome. get that and, you know, what do I put in there and stuff like that? Absolutely, Travis. Thanks. Um, so guys, this is the seller net sheet of SoCal. This is what you will see on your mobile. Okay. This section right here. But guys, this section right here is where you can place a name for your, your estimates and quotes. So some would put in here the name of their clients. Um, some would put the address. Uh, basically, guys, just want to share with you that we have recently updated the app to save all the estimates automatically. But if you want to manually save it, this button right here is what you want to do and use, okay? Property location field is where the address would go. We tie it up with Google Maps APIs. It's as good as you're typing an address in Google Maps. The only difference is if you're typing an address in here, you don't have to go all the way and type in the zip code. The zip code wouldn't work, okay? But the idea is if we type in here an address, it brings about a suggestion. So as we go through, the address and we find what matches in there, we can simply click on it and we should be able to move forward with coding, just as easy as that. We can select the transaction type in here, enter the sales price, pick a closing date and fill out the rest of the fields. So from the mortgage payoffs down to the other seller expenses and credits, they are not required fields but definitely something that the real source would like to fill out and you know any users would like to fill out to come out uh, or to come up with a closer value at closing. So mortgage payoffs, um, we got here, first payoff, if there's any second lien payoff, we can put that here on this separate field. It's gonna be a separate line item on the result screen. Your commission's gonna be right here, as you have noticed. The fields are automated already since I have set that on my default cost right here. I can adjust this as I, as I see fit. I can even add the brokerage fee. We got the HOA dues. We can switch it between monthly, quarterly, or annually. And we can put that here. We can even ask the sellers, have they already paid their annual dues? Yes or no? You know, and we help with the prorate. Any additional HOA dues and fees can be added in here, but they are not required. So they can skip that if that's not needed or not applicable. Otherwise, you can put them here and it's going to appear as a separate line item. 
for the property taxes, we can see that we have automated it already. We can simply go online and check the annual property tax rate and we can do either one of them. So if we add in here, you know, the amount instead of the rate, you can see that it's pre-fill. We do vice versa, it's gonna do the same thing, okay? Um, so let's say we put 1% in there. The seller has not paid any taxes. Otherwise it can be tagged as paid in half or it's already paid in full, okay? And the proration happens between the selections. And of course we can add any additional seller expenses or credits as we can see fit, okay? Maybe it's a credit from the buyer going to the seller, um, and we can keep on adding any expense to see fit. I hit calculate, and I get my seller net sheet. You can see the net proceeds here as opposed to how much they sold the house for, and we have this visual bar right here. Show the seller at a glance the difference between what they're netting as opposed to what they sold the house for. All the other details are gonna be shown underneath. Wealth base, very easy to read and see. And we got a complete breakdown in here of all the fees. Showing your commissions, property taxes, the HOA dues, the recording and transfer fees, which by the way is automatic on our app. And of course, we got the other seller expenses and credits that we have added and pre-filled earlier. Um, the net proceeds guys, as you notice, is going on the top bottom view. So it's going to be very easy and very pleasing when it comes to presentations because sellers and anyone looking at it can see it from top to bottom. Okay. Um, we got a little disclaimer right here underneath, but you know, we got some helpful buttons here. What I just clicked is the show more button. Good way for me to use this reference to show my sellers or anyone I'm presenting this seller net sheet what the transaction type is, how much we are selling the house for, you know, which city and county is being pulled from, and the closing date, and actually the address. If there's anything here that has to be updated or adjusted, you got here the edit button to help you out, okay? Edit right here brings you back to the actual quote or estimate, and you don't even have to worry about a thing when it comes to your initial details being wiped out because they're going to be intact. Okay, you can just simply go in there, make the changes, remove anything that has to be removed or add anything that has to be added. And you should be able to go back in there straight away. Can we see what the, the, um, the flyer looks like? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, let me download the PDF version. Yeah, um, guys, while we'll waiting for it to like a listing presentation, absolutely, and the flyers too. Yeah, yeah. So um, while the the PDF's downloading, just want to share with you guys a perspective. Please disregard the details. It's just a sample. I just want to show you when the photos are downloaded in there. But this is what it's going to look like on a PDF. Um, but I'm going to share my screen, um, my desktop screen, guys, so I can show you uh, what. Okay, the downloaded version looks like. So this is what the downloaded version of the PDF is going to look like for your seller net sheet. This is the closing date, of course, the rest of the details right here. Very presentable. Well fit for printing and all the details are going to be seen right here. This is my real tour. Information is going to be here. If I add my phone number, it's going to show here and of course my photo. We got the visual bar indicated in there too. And we can see a detailed breakdown, which is wealth based and very easy to see by the seller or anyone reading through this PDF. Very cool. So, so, so that's a PDF. What's it look like on the buyer oh. side then? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, actually, uh, Travis, just before I jump in there, I just want to share this flyers real quick and, you know, have you take a look at it. This would be our go-to flyer um, because it promotes your expertise, your services, your network, and what's in it for them to partner with you guys as their rep. 
Um, this one right here is pretty cool too because it gives them the perspective of what they're netting based on the sales price you have added on your estimate tool or your seller net sheet itself. So it's pretty synced already. Let me jump in there and show you guys what it's going to look like. So this is your go-to flyer. I'd recommend you add this in all of your estimates um, and all your PDFs when you send them over to your clients via email because it's branded. It's got your photo and your details right here. And again, it talks about your expertise as your listing agent here. Okay, your network, your negotiation skills, and your wide expertise over the market. The other flyer right here, though, that's no thing, is sync to your net sheets. So it's automatically going to say in there the sales price and their likely net proceeds. This doesn't move, but this are good in, insight for them. Um, as to why they want to sell the house and why it's good to sell the house right now in terms of you know decision making um in terms of the market um uh, and what it's like right now okay so that's the other flyer the other one is uh more on tax considerations but pretty much looks something like this okay so those are the flyers and that's what the pdf version is going to look like uh, Travis, just want to check with your team if they do have any other questions just before I show you the buyer tool. Um, if anybody does have questions, if you want to just throw them in the chat, then we'll, we'll absolutely. We Janelle's, Janelle's yeah. got that in check. Perfect. Okay. So, guys, again, I just clicked the new estimate tab right here, showing you now the buyer estimate. Again, this is where you can name your estimate, even though it's already saved. You can go ahead and check it there and add the names in there or edit them. Um, I'm going to throw in here an address. Guys, by the way, I just want to share with you that if you don't have the exact address, you can still use the city or county and state combination, okay, to run a quote in here. Um, transaction type, we know that we can click on it and pick the transaction type. We can select from the list of loan types in here. And again, the lenders, we not have any in the room, can automate your lender fees or each of the loan type through the default pod found here, okay? I enter my sales price in here. I can adjust the percentage and that automates the down payment and loan amount section, but that can of course be adjusted too. I can select between five and 30 years for the loan term and adjust interest rates and the PMI rate. This can be pushed up to 2.5%. I can select my closing date in here. And of course, I got my additional fields. I can pick from the list of endorsements. I can remove anything that's automated already or pick any out of this list and it's gonna be included. For the home insurance, I can add my home insurance in there, but I automated it earlier. Same with my property taxes. I can enter the flat rate in here for the brokerage fee. HOA dues, I can enter them as needed. And pounds are basically just additional mortgages. We can adjust the amounts in there or multiply that based on the number of months. Okay, since we have pre-filled the property taxes and the home insurance, we can see details already populated in there. And of course, our lender fees. So we can add to any of the following. This can be switched to a flat amount, usually 2%, maybe 70 in here, 400, you know, processing fee of 75. Um, I'm not on top of the lender fees really, but you know, as you can see, we can add any value in there as their lenders see fit. And if there's anything in addition, they can put that here on the other fee stack. And of course, we got the other buyer expenses and credits field. We can add any as we see fit or remove them by pressing here. I'll hit calculate to show you guys the buyer estimate. And what I like about our buyer estimate tool is that it's uh, visually appealing. As you can see here, we got all this visuals right here. 
Um, if they're on a computer like what I have right now, I can scroll through here and see what they are for. You know, it tells me what comprises the monthly total. It's going to have this breakdown right here. What's due with closing is going to be shown here on the left hand corner with all this visual bars to help them at a glance see the difference. But if, we're not, uh, if they want to have the, the more detailed breakdown, of course, it's going to be right here underneath. You know, the down payment, the lender fees, the title cost, the recording and transfer fees, the property taxes, the HOA is black because it, we, we indicated it's already paid, um, the broker fees, and of course, the home warranty that we have manually added uh, and automated in there. We got our helpful tools in here, our buttons, show them references. We can download the PDF version of the buyer estimate. Uh, we can email it and we can always go back to make changes. And as you can see, it's a breeze to go back and make those changes. All the PDF version is downloading. Guys, I'd like to share with you that we have the following flyers too. This would be your go-to flyer. This is what um, is going to appear as the listing agent flyer I've shown you earlier. Um, this one right here is also branded. And the other one, again, talks about perspective of 20 and 10% down payments. I'm going to download those and show you that real quick. This is what the buyer estimate is going to look like once it's downloaded as a PDF. As you'll notice, um, it's exactly going to look like what's on the, the platform, including those visual bars and presentations in there. Your details are going to be right here. And that's your buyer estimate. Um, additionally, the flyer, I'm going to show you guys, this one talks about the 10 and 20% difference on the down payment. You now with some helpful insights right here underneath. The other one is branded with your details. You know, just some helpful tips for the buyers and looking for their homes. You know, and the other one is going to promote your services and your expertise. James, um, is it possible to quickly show them the rent versus buy and the monthly affordability? I was about to go there, sure, Janelle. Not a problem. Okay, thanks, James. Uh, that, thanks. That's okay, Trav Travis, right? Um, yeah, we got about 10 minutes or so. Absolutely. Yeah, just want to share with you guys that on top of the seller net sheet and the buyer estimate, you got four other tools in here. We've seen how the market shifted over the last couple of months, and you may come across clients who may be asking for you. Um, you know, how much should I sell, sell my house for if I'm looking to, you know, have this net proceed, you know, um, so it looks exactly like the seller net sheet, although it's kind of, you know, different, uh, hold on, because it's going to recommend them the sales price based on their, their target net proceeds, okay? So this is the sell to net. As you can see, it's recommending the sales price in here. Fill out the rest of the details. It's gonna bring them to their desired net proceed, okay? Um, we got the flyers available in there too. And of course, we got the multiple offers. If you come across any, you know, clients who's looking to, you know, see their offers and you want to make it more presentable and show it at a glance, this is your go-to tool. You know, you can add any additional expenses here as you see fit and fill out the rest of the details. Adding an offer is very easy. You know, just like that, pulling the rest of the details. And I can keep adding as many offers as I see fit. And I can keep an adding. Um, so 
this is what the you know multiple offer is going to look like once downloaded as a pdf each page would have two offers in there and then the rest would be going on the next pages okay so as you can see it's very easy to compare based on their offers and we got the flyers too showing in there And of course, we got the rent versus buy in here. Okay. Okay. Um, say we got a property purchase price of a million in there. Got a closing date. Okay, we can fill out the rest of the details in here. Let's hit calculate and basically show you whether renting or buying is way better. Okay, we got this visual graph in here and we got the rest of the details in here, which indicates whether buying or renting is more beneficial after 30 years, okay? So that's the rent versus buy tool. And of course you got your flyers in here. Um, there's an additional flyer here showing any of the visuals we have seen so far. And again, this can be downloaded as a PDF. Um, this is what it's going to look like for the rent versus buy PDF. Okay. So those visual graphs in there and all the details in comparison to buying and renting is going to be indicated on this flyer. Okay. Um, so that's uh, the rent versus buy and the self to net and multiple offers. We got the monthly affordability too, works exactly like self to net, you know, if they're eyeing to just look for a certain amount for the monthly payment, they can use the monthly affordability too. Pretty straightforward. If uh, you guys uh, wanna submit this as a title order, you can just press order title in here you know, submit it to Janelli. You can attach the contract, place notes, and track your orders. More or less, if you submit a title order, Janelli will reach out to you as soon as she gets them. And if she has any questions or she'd like to ask anything, she can reach out to you via a phone call or an email, okay? So everything's all set in here, all prepared. Um, in addition, guys, I just want to share with you um, that there's these flyers that Janelli can, of course, share with you. Um, just want to explain that currently our platform is web-based, okay? Um, you may be looking for it uh, on the Play Store, and you may not see it right away, but please know that we are in the process of having an app anyways. As soon as it comes out, Janelli will be in touch, if not myself, um, but for now, we chose to have the app web-based. And the reason why is because, you know, our industry goes through a lot of changes. We get through so many changes that it may cause interruptions. And considering your experience as users of the app, we definitely don't want you to go through a presentation and go through this piece hit here to update the app button and those kind of prompts or notifications. So that's not gonna happen on your app. Uh, you can definitely see the changes right away if there's any, um, and that's the reason why we went web-based. And with that, uh, with that said, guys, uh, I'd like to show you how you can add it on your mobile phones. Do we have uh, any Android users in here? Um, or is everyone using an iPhone or an iOS yeah, device? I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's one or two in here. Uh, yeah. Susan, yeah. Um, I think we got a few, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me see this. Let me do this. Um, let me see if I can, uh, you know, split screens. Um, give me just one second, guys. You know, uh, let's see here. Um, let me do this instead. Okay, I 
think I know what to do. So, okay. All right. So, um, okay, guys. So I got it in split screens. Um, so our iPhone users and our iOS users can go through the following details. Uh, guys, basically, you can wait for these flyers to get to you, but you can try installing the app on your phones right now uh, through the following steps. You can just feel free to open any browser you have in there. For iPhone users, we can use Safari. That's already installed in, in your devices. And type in, uh, you don't even have to type in HTTPS. You can type in SoCal title company dot title capture dot com. Same thing for Android users when you go into your Chrome. And as soon as you see the landing page, you can immediately follow step two to four right here. You know, press the icon on your iPhones or the three dots on Chrome and look for add to home screen. You know, as soon as you do, you'll be able to see the SoCal logo on your home screen, which you can tap on and basically use to log in. Um, Janelle, while everyone's adding the app on their phone, I just wanted to check, have we sent- We have team? not. Uh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So we will, um... I will get with Travis and send um, the invitation link after the, the training. Oh yeah, sounds, sounds good. Yeah, so guys, um, what I'm gonna do here uh, is I'll work with Travis and Janelli uh, to get your details. So you wouldn't have to like sign up right now. Um, we're, we're gonna send you an invitation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you would like to go ahead and sign up now, feel free to, to look for Janelli's name in there. Just pick SoCal title on the agency or branch and look for Janelli's name and you should be able to set up your password and your profile as shown on the walkthrough. And as you know, you already have, on, uh, have the app on your home screen. So you have it 24 by seven already. Um, guys, I'm gonna open the floor for Q&A while you're doing the installation or the addition on your phones. Um, and let me know, please, if you come across any challenges or issues, and we'll be more than happy to assist, uh, especially myself. And I okay. wanted to jump in if you guys had any other questions and um, wanted to maybe do a one-on-one, -on -one, because I know it's a lot of information. We can definitely schedule a meeting with me um, and James, and we can go over it. And then if you have any questions, we can tackle it in that one-on-one -on -one training. And of course, if you guys have any title needs or title questions, please reach out to me. I'll leave my information on the chat if you guys already don't have it. Um, and, you know, I can connect with you and get you what you guys need. Cool. I appreciate it. And we do have um, Janelle's contact info and SoCal title uh, in, the, in the online office. So if you ever need to, uh, the, the title rate sheets are in there. And then, um, we can probably go ahead and add this link as well. Once you send these out, Janelli, I can add it in there for, you know, when we, when we hire new agents in, which is fairly often. So, um, cool. And then I see, you know, this is a great tool for obviously your listing presentations, but think about your open houses as well, you know, to be able to pull one of these up real quick, maybe print it off as an attachment to your open house flyer. Um, so maybe buyers can see, you know, how much is this home going to cost them potentially has some uh, breakdown of fees so they can kind of wrap their head around what a home in that price point would look like, especially if they're just starting out, uh, probably a good conversation piece so they can really start to get an idea of, you know, what things are going to cost them. So think about that uh, for all of you out there doing the open houses every weekend. Other than that, um, I appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks, Travis. Um, we got to jump on another meeting here, but um, really informative. And um, we'll put the, the replays in our um, Facebook group if you guys want to watch it again um, on this section here. Um, otherwise, um, reach out to either us or Janelli if you have any other questions. Awesome. Thanks, Travis. Right. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys.
Okay, yes. we'll see you.